We have seen how Detect Undercut Stock can keep an OptiRef toolpath out of air cuts. In this case, I have two OptiRef toolpaths that kind of blend in the middle. The first OptiRef toolpath has a lot of air cuts. In this case, I could activate Detect Undercut Stock, but really what I want to do is blend these toolpaths together in the middle rather than remove all undercuts. Increased regen time aside, I may not want to use Detect Undercut Stock here because what I'm after is a decent blend in between these two toolpaths. Normally, the way that I'd go about that is run backplot and backplot all the way to the end of the toolpath and maybe click back over here somewhere and look at this Z coordinate down here in the bottom corner of the screen. This says Z 79.9. I could come in here and enter in my steep shallow values, Z 79.9, and that tool will be limited at that depth. However, I'm kind of happy with this toolpath. This is the target one that I want to make a change to. You may notice this toolpath is black, signifying this is a dirty operation. There are lots of reasons to keep a dirty toolpath around. In this case, I really like seeing what the old motion looked like. Unfortunately, I cannot backplot this toolpath to find the Z depth. While working on this part, I found out that Analyze Toolpath will actually work on this dirty toolpath. So I can come up here and click, say, this depth right here and see that I have a depth of Z 37.0. So in this case, I can come down here and let's say Z 37.1 and regenerate this toolpath. So now we can see we've trimmed this OptiRef toolpath. We've limited its maximum Z depth. And there's a nice overlap between that and the lower toolpath. As I programmed this Nike project, I started to use Analyze Toolpath much more than I did before. And it's especially for reasons like this, where you can run Analyze Toolpath on a dirty toolpath that makes it such a powerful tool.